Welcome to part two of our eye retouching tutorial. In the first part, we looked at getting the whites of the eyes cleaned up in a realistic way and removing some of the heavy veins. In this part, we're going to move on and we're going to look at making the irises and the pupil come alive. And we'll even add a little bit of a catch light at the end just for a little extra uh, pizzazz. So uh, I'm Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe. Don't forget, check out photoshopcafe.com. We've got a new site up with a bunch of free tutorials and learning resources. So here we have the eyes uh, from the previous tutorial. I'm just going to click and zoom in a little bit here and we can see what kind of what we have. In fact, if I hit Control 1 or Command 1 on the keyboard, that'll zoom us up to 100%. And you can see there's the eye that we worked on. And then what I did is actually just repeated the same steps into the second eye so we could kind of uh, see both of them so it doesn't look quite so weird. And once again, we can do the before and the after. And check out that other video that we have on cleaning up the whites of the eyes. So here we go in part two. Now we're going to work on the irises and make those look great. So we're going to work on this eye this time. Uh, once again, you would repeat the steps for both eyes, but I only want to just work on one at a time, just so we, you can kind of learn the steps and what to do. So what we're going to do is actually going to create a new layer group in here. So I'm actually just going to tap to create a layer group and we're going to call this one iris. And inside this group, I'm going to create three new layers. And so the bottom layer, I'm going to call this one brightness. The next one here, I'm going to call outside. And this one here, I'm going to call inside. Now, this is basically what I do most of the time when I'm doing eye retouching. I pretty much always do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the outside. So the outside, we're going to bring some definition to the actual eye. And the way to do that is we're actually going to grab our selection here. We're going to grab our elliptical marquee tool. And I'm just going to, holding down the shift key, I'm just going to drag around here. And I just want to make a selection around about the outside of the eye there. So there we go. We have a selection there that follows the eye. Now, sometimes if you've got a photograph where the model's not looking straight on, a uh, perfect circle might not work. So just uh, kind of experiment with that and just kind of drag that around. You can use the space bar too to uh, move your selection while you're uh, drawing it. So that's another tip for you. So what I want to do is actually save this selection. So we're going to go under select and I'm just going to choose save selection because I'm actually going to use this later. And uh, on the selection here, we're just going to call this one iris. And then I'm just going to click OK. And uh, now we've got our selection. So let's fill this up with what we want to do here. So what I'm going to do on the outside is I'm actually just going to paint around here carefully. So I'm just going to grab the brush and I'm going to make sure I'm working with a black brush. And under the settings of the brush here, you want to turn your hardness all the way down so you're working with a soft brush. Now what I want to do is actually make the brush bigger. In fact, make it pretty large, almost the size actually of your selection is actually going to work pretty good. Maybe a little tad smaller, actually, in this case. And I'm just going to paint around the outside. So notice what I'm doing here is I'm actually just very carefully just painting around the outside here. So let's just kind of do that. In fact, I want to make that a little smaller. There we go. And notice what we're doing. We're just creating this outside area. And this might still be a little bit large. In fact, let me undo that. I feel like it is just a little too large there. So let me drop that down a little bit, making a smaller brush, and we're just going to kind of drag around there. There we go. And that's better. And notice I'm just kind of letting the edge of the um, brush go in there. I'm not painting with the main part. And I can hit Command D or Control D to deselect, and we can see what we've got there. There's the eye. And notice there's a little bit that's gone over, so we're going to kind of clean that up a little bit. So I'm actually just going to create a layer mask there. And in that layer mask, just paint with black to just kind of clean that up. So I'm just going to clean that up quickly. There we go. And you can kind of see what we've got now. So we just got that there. Now we want to go on the inside. So we're going to do a very similar thing. I'm just going to grab our marquee tool here. And I'm just going to drag out a selection. And make sure when you get to the pupil, notice is this area where it gets kind of filters in. If anything, you want to make it a little bigger rather than smaller. And now why is the reason? Well, the reason for that is we don't want to make these pupils look dilated. 
if they look dilated, it makes it look like the model's not very happy. Um, whereas the, a larger pupil shows more excitement and um, it actually just looks better psychologically. Now, depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to make something look scary and creepy, then make the pupils a little smaller. So what we want to do now is we want to select this uh, inverse to selection. So we're going to choose select and now we're going to click to inverse. So what it's doing now is it's selecting everything but the pupil. And we're going to do a very similar thing to what we did before. We're going to paint here. This time I want to make the brush pretty much the same size as our selection. And we're still using that soft edge brush. And what we're going to do now is we're going to paint with white. So basically you're just going to go over there and you're just going to tap once to apply that white right there. So you can kind of see that. And if I command D or deselect, you can see we've got that little white selection. It's almost looking like an eclipse right now. So let's create a mask and clean that up. Now, don't worry about the fact that right now some of this uh, might be looking, you know, like it's it's overdone because that's that's fine. That's where we're at right now. So I'm just going to paint with this black and let's just get rid of that. Just clean that up over there. Now, you what you might want to do is actually just make a selection and save a selection so you don't have to keep painting that. That's one way of doing it, but I'm just kind of doing this quick. All right, so we've got the two parts. Now we're gonna go down to the third part here and we're gonna do the brightness. Now I wanna select that eye again. I wanna select the outside, but rather than having to do that because we saved that selection, so we can go up under select and now we can choose the load selection and we can bring in that selection that we already saved here and that's gonna be iris. And I'm just gonna click okay. So now we've got that selection. So we're just reusing it. If you didn't do that, you could just create this selection once again. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to paint in here, believe it or not, with white. Um, so don't be alarmed. <laughs> we're going to fix this later. So what we're going to do is just go in here and just paint around in there just with a white. You don't want to paint over the pupil. We're just trying to get just in the iris area. And I'm just going to hit Command D or Control D to deselect that. And then what we're going to do and under there is, of course, we're going to create our mask once again paint with black just to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to use a smaller brush there and we're just kind of cleaning that up. All right so if you look at everything right now it looks almost like a very cartoony eye. It looks a little strange and that's okay because what we're going to do now is we're going to do the steps that are going to make this look believable. So I'm going to turn off the top two layers and we're going to start just with this white because I know this looks kind of weird. Let's soften this a little bit. So we're just going to choose the filter and we're going to grab a blur here and we're just going to blur this just to take the hard edge off a little bit. Uh, make sure that we've selected the layer. Actually, let's just go back here. We don't want to be selecting the mask. We want to be selecting the layer. And we're going to go down to our blur, grab our Gaussian blur here. And we'll just put a little amount on there, maybe a little more than that, just to kind of soften those edges. There, yeah, that's looking pretty good, about 2.2. And here's where the magic happens. We're going to change the blend mode to overlay blend mode and notice what that does is it just really brings out the color there in the eye. Now you can see the edge is still a little bit harsh, which makes it look like she's wearing contacts right now. And uh, that doesn't really matter because it's going to be hidden by some of the other things we're going to do. And also, we're not going to keep this full force like this. But if you're uncomfortable with that, you could blur it a little more. So you could just choose the uh, Gaussian blur one more time. And that just kind of softens that effect. So you can see what that's doing is it's really making the eye color pop. Now I could have done this with an adjustment layer too. I could have done this with curves or, or levels, but let's do it this way. So now we're going to go into the outside. Once again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to soften that edge a little bit. Now, because we already added the right amount of blur on here, we can just choose filter and just use Gaussian blur again. Or you could just hit control F or command F to reapply the previous used filter. And notice that just softens that appropriately. So let's go to the one in the middle here, which is looking a little bit strange right now. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to apply that same blur to that. So if you look at this right now, and it's, it's not done yet, so um, don't worry about that. But if you look at this before and after, you can see how it's really just cutting in here and defining the different parts of the eye. So, um, so it's creating a very strong and powerful eye, and maybe you want the effect like this full force. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to make it a little bit more subtle, and that'll make it look more realistic. So I'm just going to take each of these layers here, and I'm just going to bring the opacity all the way down 
to zero. All right, so we're going to start now on our brightness, and we're going to take the opacity up a little bit. Now, before I do, I'm just going to rest and pause for a second and just keep looking. What am I doing? I'm letting my eye calibrate to the untouched version of this eye. And that means now when I add a little bit of the effect, I'm going to be doing it compared to the original. So I'm going to be more subtle. Had I taken everything at 100 and I take it down, I'm looking at a heavily affected photograph and I'm going to be more heavy handed. So this way I can be more light. So let's just bring this up a little bit. I'm going to bring a little bit into the light there. And look at that. We're looking at around about 23%. So it's quite subtle before and after. Now let's go up to the next layer. We're going to do the outside. And we're going to just pull this in a little bit. There we go. Just kind of liking that about there. And that's at about 28%. So you can see how subtle I'm applying these. And then the one in the middle here, we're going to keep this quite low. Where are we at? There. And you can see that's, that's a little higher. I'm at about 50%. Maybe bring it down a little. And if we look at this before and after, you can see the difference. So I'm just going to take this layer group here that we've just done, and we can look at this before and after. You can see how subtle I'm applying these effects because I want something that looks realistic. Let's back it off a little bit. If we look at that eye and we look at it before and we look at it after, we're just kind of um, bringing a little bit of life in there without getting too carried away or too crazy. Now, if you wanted, you could make that much stronger. That's up to you. Um, what we're going to do, though, now is just to finish this off. If you look at this eye right now, you can see this kind of looking a little foggy. And, uh, and we don't really want that because it's not really looking crisp and clean. And what happened is because she's got these extended eyelashes on, the light that was kind of a little bit higher, you can see where the light was. We haven't retouched any of the rest of this photograph. You can see it's just starting to get in there, the catch light. But what we're looking at here is actually just a reflection off the white seamless. So we're going to create a catch light to give this a little bit more, a um, little bit more life. So we're just going to go up here and create a new layer. I'm going to grab white for the brush. And then what I usually do for my catch lights is I'll bring the hardness down to about, let's try about 70%, 70 to 75%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our brush and then we're just gonna tap on here and apply a catch light now if you don't like that and you want to make it a little larger you could let's make it a little larger and just tap again and you can see that one's maybe a little too large let's go somewhere in between and we just kind of like tap a couple of times whoa it's a little heavy so let's just actually go down here and we're just going to make this brush a little smaller manually. There we go. And now I'm just going to click once on there to apply that catch light. There we go. That looks better. And now you're looking directly at this catch light and you're saying, well, that just looks like a spot that was just added. But if you zoom out a little bit and you were actually to look away and maybe just add another one on over here to match it and you were to just look away, you wouldn't really notice that catch light as being a catch light. Um, you know, because when people are looking at the photograph, they're just looking at this photograph as a whole. We were just concentrating on that a second ago. So let's have a look and we're going to zoom in a little bit. The one thing you could do is if you feel like that catch light's a little much, we can still, we could soften it a little bit. Let's just go under the filter and we're going to blur it a little bit and just soften those edges a little bit. Now, you don't want to make them too soft because if you do, it makes it look like this um, object's not shiny. So the more shiny an object is, the smaller and the sharper the specular will appear. So I'm dropping it down to about 1.8. And I'm kind of liking that. So if we go here and we look at that before and after for that catch light, it's looking quite realistic. And you could even pull the opacity down a little bit if you wanted. If you want to lower the effects of that. So I've got that down to about 91%. So there we go. Let's have a look at the eye now. I'm just going to do the... Um, let's zoom in. Hit command one or control one on windows to zoom in and here's our final eye so i'm just going to option click or alt click look at this before and you can see it after so we've just bought some life in there and we've done some retouching on those eyes i hope you enjoyed that uh, for more free tutorials check out photoshopcafe.com and also don't forget 
subscribe, uh, comment down here, leave a comment, tell us what you think, what you'd like me to teach, and uh, also hit a like on there and share this with your friends. So thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.